When you look at techniques like a takedown, for example, you see the beauty, the beauty that is uh, a scored, a successful scored takedown. Uh, but there's obviously a deeper chain of events that leads to a takedown happening in the first place. There, there's grip fighting, there's timing, there's breaking of posture, uh, there's proper setups required for takedowns to come to fruition. Uh, and it seems that great wrestlers have a deep understanding of that invisible dance uh, that happens before a shot's even made. Uh, do, do you feel that, 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 that the only way to hone that kind of thing is through live resistance of someone, live training of someone trying to resist you or can that be drilled to a certain extent you learn by drilling once you learn the parts you got one part two part three part four part five parts but in reality that's learning because you're learning parts when you're executing it goes to one. Those five go into one. Because when you want to execute something, it takes one move, not five different moves, uh, even though sometimes it takes five different moves because there's a flurry. But for one hold to be executed in one situation, that has got to be one complete move. And there's any hesitation. So really, a move only takes... Uh, six tenths of a second. The time you do the setup, snap, and going, and fin the the penetration, the execution, and the finish, it only takes less than a second. You know, so uh, in reality, you don't know that move until you execute it under live conditions. Once you execute it under live conditions you'll feel the real move and then you'll have it better. Now you can beat, you can win and you don't have to wait so long to execute it. If you're, if you look at who your partner is. So if you want to learn a quick move, you may have to pick a partner that is not quite so tough, but yet he's going live and you're going live. And so you can learn this whole quicker. Now, when you pick the tough guy and you execute on it, you know you got it down really well. But you got to start somewhere. And by the quicker you can start, the quicker you're going to be able to get to that tougher guy and be able to execute on it. So it's got to start somewhere. You usually don't have a move that just starts with an execution live on a really good guy. Now, I have done it before, but it's the... It's not the norm. It's not the norm. And the quicker you can get a live execution hold underway, the quicker you're going to be able to do it a second time. Absolutely. And a third and a fourth. Absolutely. You know, it, it, it's funny. And so I, I've trained Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, as you know. And one thing in Jiu Jitsu that, that, that gets talked about a lot is the importance of having lesser experienced people to practice things with. Uh, and like you, and that, that's something that you just emphasize really well. I think that if you try to beat your head against the wall trying to take down a D1 guy when you're in high school and develop a skill against him, you're probably going to hit a brick wall most of the time. And you didn't really learn anything except the fact that, wow, that guy's really good. And I got a long way to go. So I love, I love the fact that you said that it's important to have people at various levels uh, that you can that you can work things with. Uh, and eventually, once you get the parts all together, you can start apl applying it to people at higher and higher levels until you really get to a, to a good level. So I, that's a great point you made. It's important to have those people. You know, another really important point is, and I don't know if I learned this at the beginning. I think I learned it more as a coach that even though I love offense, I really love offense, execution of holds. And I, that's, that was the nature of the game. That was the nature of the game. To teach wrestling, to do offense, you usually have to be aggressive. Or you wait for the other guy to move. And you might be waiting there forever. So, so one of the most important things to learn this is really important, is your defense. Even though you don't want to be known for a defensive guy because you want to score on your offense, no, that's what you want to be. That scares the daylights out of people because if, they're, if you're known as just a defensive guy, you don't have to do anything. The other guy, because then, you, then you're not going to score. But 
that defense is one of the first things you learn. So like on, like on takedowns, you know, you, you learn how to keep a guy from getting into your legs. Now, if he gets into your legs, there's, that's a whole different story. But you don't want to let him in on your legs, okay? Because you don't want to give him anything. You don't want to give him anything. But if you do give him something, you better know what to do. But defense means him, you know, down blocking, staying off your, you know, keeping him, him, his hands off your body, you know, just not being able to get scored upon. And if you take a look at the rules of our sport, once you develop that defense and all you have to worry about is offense, then you're well on your way on your feet. 